All right, the first thing I'm going to do is place a stencil on his arm. The easiest way to do with an arm is have him sort of in a military position, completely straight down. You're going to want to take alcohol, diluted, wipe off the area. And then, as I've said in the other ones, I use Dettol which is a first aid antiseptic. You can pretty much get it at any tattoo magazine or any tattoo store. It's just a little bit cleaner way. I've seen uh, several different approaches to it. Just the biggest one I can say is don't use underarm deodorant. It's the easiest way to cross contamin. So I got that tall in a normal ink container. I'll take it and just put a small film throughout his arm. You don't want to saturate him, but you want it enough to where it's going to cover everything. And this tattoo that we're putting on him is a pretty complex tattoo, so. And obviously this is after you've shaved his arm and have it cleared off. Now this is the tattoo that we're doing today. As you can see, it's going to be a pretty complex tattoo coming down his arm. So I'm going to take my stencil, which is already pre-designed, pre which at this point we should have already covered. And I'm going to use his center line here, sort of anatomical, and go straight down to get this perfectly lined up. I'll start with the top and if you get the top straight everything else will kind of fall into place. Got that there. And this is the part you just start folding over. And then from this point, I would never completely 100% trust that you got enough debt tall on it to cover the entire tattoo. To compensate for that, I'm going to take a moist cloth and just kind of hit all the corners and pan it out. And do this over the whole tattoo. Again, the great thing about having a stencil is it will give you an idea of what it's going to look like and if it is crooked don't be too biased to take it off and start again if you use stencil paper the only way you're going to properly do that is with alcohol so after I've patted the area down just kind of let it dry on there I'll go ahead and I'll leave a corner unflapped and just check it. And to me, that looks exactly how I want it, so I'll go ahead and take it off. And at this point, I'm going to let the client observe that in the mirror, make sure that's 100% where he wants it. Always remember that put the, put the responsibility on your client and not you as far as making sure it is straight, making sure it's exactly where they want it. I'm not to say if you notice it's not there and they don't, you go ahead and do the tattoo. Just make sure that they're just as much happy with it as you are. So what I'll do is I'll let him look at it, take about five minutes, let it dry on the skin, and from this point on, I'll go ahead and start preparing my equipment. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set up my equipment. It's all been sterilized as far as your tubes go, which again, hopefully by this point you've went over all the different sterilization proper t uh, techniques. Just a reminder, in your sterilizer you want to put your tubes in there after they've been ultrasonic and cleaned for 20 minutes steamed and 20 minutes of low pressure, which low pressure means 
with heat off, but your container still interlocked. This is a travel tattoo, so I'm going to use three different styles tattoos or needles. I'm using a five round liner, which is pre packaged. It has the encoder here stating that it has been pre sterilized from the company. I'm using a seven mag shader. Again, pre packaged, it has that it's been pre-sterilized and I'm going to use a nine round. Again, this is a mag shader, this is a round shader. All of them pre-sterilized. Obviously we're going to go ahead and start up with the outline. So just as a rehearsal, take out a pack, just always be 100% observant that this part of your needle is never affected or touched. How to do that properly is I'll get the proper tube. Go ahead and take the eye, place it down inside. And this is kind of a delicate process because you don't want it, the slightest imperfection can mess up an outline. So you want to make sure you don't bang against the corners. Then I'll take, place it, and with a typical needle setup, unless you make your own, which that is usually more work than necessary, your eye loop will be facing to the left of the machine. And get that pushed on there firmly. Get everything placed into place. Remember, you want it to come out about the length of a piece of paper when it's not in motion. Tighten it down. Adjust. And what you want it is when this thing is fully at its full motion, it'll come out the length of a na uh, nickel. On a tattoo machine in full operation, It'll take typically about 20 motions per second of up and down. That's a that, that's a fine-tuned machine, a properly working one. So I'll check it. You can kind of hear how it's not too fast, but yet not too slow. If I need to, I'll make a slight adjustment. On your typical power supply, you're going to have a DC power supply and you have your current, your voltage. Your voltage you want it usually to run around 8.00. Your DC at full, you're gonna want it to run about a .30, somewhere in that range. It just depends what time of, type of manufacturer as far as operating speed, but 95% of it's done by your ear. Once you have it to where you like the sound, take your tattoo machine and set it, the needle away from you. You never want it facing inward for multiple reasons. Number one, that's more of a chance for it to get affected with hitting it and plus uh, keeping it away from you and keeping it towards your ink bottles will uh, keep it sanitation. Okay, I'm ready for the dumb time. Now what I'm doing now is obviously for copyright reasons, I'm not, I can't show you the manufacturer the particular one I have, but I got petroleum jelly. It can be bought anywhere, any dollar store, anywhere. I'm going to put it on a dental bib. A dental bib is your best protection barrier on top of your um, tattooing placement, however you got it set up. It really doesn't matter. Right now I'm sort of at a temporary placement for the not in the studio for uh, the video but you want to have enough this is again just as a refreshment is going to help it guide through the skin and plus keep ink in so what I'm going to do is I got three caps set up this again is going to be uh, an all black travel piece I'll dip it down into the petroleum that way it uh, won't uh, sort of like a glue 
and have it placed where they're still far apart. All right, now what I'm using in here is what I've found to be the best black travel outline ink you can buy, which is called Talon's Drawing Ink. I get it from Technical Tattoo Supply. A big bottle like this uh, does, again, has an expiration, but however, if you're in a busy tattoo shop, um, a big tattoo, uh, a bottle like this should last you for two years. And for the price, it, you definitely cannot beat it. So, I already have that set up. Now, whenever, even if it's been a few minutes, you always want to shake your bottle up because it's not 100% black ink. Obviously, it's diluted. And um, once you get more advanced tattoo, you can dilute your own ink to your own preference. But I would definitely not recommend that now. That's something that I would do after you get more uh, comfortable with knowing inks. So this one all the way to my left is going to be the main source. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this one up pretty much to the top. And later on, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use distilled water and place in both of these caps. And these are what I'm going to use for the shading. But I'm not going to worry about that right now. I haven't got that far in the process and it's just too much ink lying around unnecessarily. Well, my customer's back and everything is uh, where he properly placed it and it's been about 10 minutes, so we're gonna go ahead and start on the outline. All right, what I'm gonna do now is I have his arm in a stand that I actually custom built for my preference, but not to be repetitive, if you can't get this skin stretched out, you're not going to get good results while doing a tattoo. So I need to have it to where it's stretched out. Some key points I want to go over while I'm still getting things ready is nowadays a lot of your customers or clients are going to have a latex allergy. So your safest bet is to get a latex free glove, which I have now. And don't let that worry you if you're worried about your protection barrier because you're still going to have that. Now what I just sprayed on this paper towel is green soap which we've discussed in previous tapes. It's another antiseptic but it don't ha it's not really alcohol based so it's not going to burn your customer. Now what I'm going to do is the petroleum jelly that I had out earlier. I'm going to take it on the tip of my finger and I'm going to make a light barrier over where I'm getting ready to start tattooing. You can cover the whole tattoo because that's actually going to keep help keep the stencil on. But you want to do a light barrier. You don't want to do too much, but you don't want to do not enough. Like I said, it's going to help guide the needle while you're going across your skin. It's, it's going to create sort of a uh, track for you. That way you, it don't stop and get jittered. Now this is not a tattoo for somebody that just started. Even though you want to hear repetitively from tattoo artists that travel was a perfect way to start tattooing, this is a complex travel piece. I would not recommend it for this for somebody that just is getting into the tattoo work field. You know, you can do half of it, do something about like that big, that's fine. I wouldn't do real long straight lines. I would do more of a curvature, or something that you can fix, it's gonna be all black. This one, what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna start off with not really 100% focusing on doing every line perfect, because later on we're going to come in and tip shade and fix area. If we went through here and try to make every line exactly perfect, we're going to take double the time that's needed. So I have everything set up. Um, what I use is I just use a, a Dollar General, Family Dollar paper bag to kind of film a little barrier here. It's not necessary to wrap your whole machine up. It's just going to get in your way. I see a lot of people do on TV. For sterilization purposes, I cannot see how that's going to make any difference. But I do want this part of the cord to be covered just because that's what's going to be touching if anything does. So I'm going to go ahead and, and take my needle at this point and just make two hits into the uh, top of your ink cap. You always want to discuss with your client before you start this part. Make sure that they know if they need to move for any particular reason. 
please let them know and uh, get ready to get started. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up. I don't want to start at the top and work my way down because I'm going to be pushing this part of the tattoo out. So I'll go ahead and get the skin where I need it and start doing lines. All right, and here's another thing. When you do a line, you don't want to do too big of a line, but you don't want to do too small of a line. You want it enough to with one hand motion. You want to do one complete hand motion. When it gets to the part where you feel like you can't move your hand anymore, stop and pick up later. So I kind of started at this point, worked my way down, so now I'm going to start here and finish out the line. You need to also remember when you do that, you can't stop at where you stopped previously. You need to go ahead and follow through and start pulling your tattoo machine out so it doesn't make a, a thick line. And always be observant that your stencil is, is what it is, a stencil. It is not what you 100% have to go by. If you feel like you need to straighten a line out or if you feel like you need to fix something, go ahead and do it. You don't need to, uh, to follow. You'll see throughout this whole tattoo that I'm not going to follow this exact stencil. I'm going to do what I think looks best for the tattoo. So we'll continue. Wipe off. Make sure you're always observing of the area you just did. Always make sure that you have enough ink in there. If it looks like it's starting to fade out, start again. Which, since I did the lines, I'm gonna go ahead and just take one little dab in there. You don't want too much ink in in, the, in your tip of your of your needle because then it's just gonna start blobbing out the area and you're not gonna be able to see anything. So again, this is a real long line. I'm not gonna start here and try to work my way all the way down that that would be too much and that's when you're going to start getting uneven outlines so I'm going to start at about a halfway point enough to where my hand feels comfortable and then I'll continue On a travel piece like this, if you see some thin lines in here, I wouldn't 100% worry about going, keep going over it to make it thicker because it's a travel piece. It's going to be all colored in for the most part. So you just want it enough to where it's going to give you another stencil with permanent. So. Now I'm sort of doing this my own picking, it's like drawing a coloring book. You can go, there's no rhyme or reason of which way you need to do it, just as long as you start from the bottom and work your way up. Now not every two skins are alike, so another big thing you're going to notice is some people can take skin, take ink really well. Some people don't take ink really well. 
Um, that's just an issue that you're going to run into the tattoo industry. Um, there's no way really to fix it. I definitely wouldn't keep going over if it looks like they're pushing ink out. That's one of the important reasons why you, you should never drink alcohol while you're as far as your customer or client should never drink alcohol because it, it'll push ink out as quick as you're putting it in. And the only thing you're going to do is put scar tissue and not a good tattoo. And you really want to focus, especially on travel pieces. They always come up to a real fine point. You really want to make that happen. And how you make that happen is you, you want to kind of start coming in extremely close and actually start at towards right before the end of it, you're going to want to just meet up with that line and then tip it off. Um, you don't want to really come in, and it's kind of hard to explain, you don't want to come in together because it, it's not going to give it that sharp look and travel is supposed to be like a real slick so that's kind of down in this area which is probably kind of hard to see but that's what I'm going to try to achieve and then it's going to give it a real sharp look kind of like it's uh, the edge of a knife. One of the biggest things in tattoos is you are going to cramp up. If it ever starts getting to the point that you're cramping up real bad, it's perfect time to take a break. And pretty much the rest of this, you're just going to place it together just like a puzzle. And this area, it's kind of getting more towards the shoulder region of my, my client here so what I how I'll compensate for that stretching the skin out is I take my paper towel and I'll, I kind of pull down on the skin like that that should stretch the skin out enough you want to keep your customer comfortable but in the same breath you need to be comfortable too because if you're not comfortable you're not going to do straight lines and you're not going to do a good tattoo. All right, what I'll do is I'll take a break now from the video, but when we come back, we'll try to have a little bit more done, and then we'll start from that point and going over sort of touching up areas and then start the shading.
All right, what I've done is I've now completed the outline. Um, I didn't focus a whole lot on making sure every line is perfectly straight, like I said, because we'll fix that later. You're going to notice in here is black spots. And what that is, that's a little secret to save time. That what you do while you're outlining. Now you got to be very careful how you do this because you can really tear somebody's skin up. But you, you come in and you just, uh, in the fine points, you take your outliner and do little circles and brush out. But you don't want to have your outliner at that point in the position that you would have it when you're doing a regular outline. You kind of want to, like I said, it needs to be about a nickel's uh, width. Try to do about a dime's width about that point and just brush out. That's going to save you a lot of time while doing the tattoo when you start the shading. Now how we're going to complete this tattoo, the original looks like this. It's a pure black travel piece, a typical travel piece that you're going to see. Um, the issue you're going to have and you're always going to want to warn your clients is with all black tattoos they're going to fade really bad. They're going to need to be touched up. They look good when they first get done but a year from now, two years from now, just from normal skin usage, the sun, anything it's going to fade out it's going to uh, with the talons ink that I was showing you it'll keep black it won't do purple like uh, traditional Indian ink but however it, it'll be blotchy I'd always try to recommend at least to do shading first and that's what we're going to work on now and that's kind of what I wanted to work on on this series because that's 95 percent of tattoos that's where you're going to make or break it so what I'm going to do now is I have my tattoo machine already set up with a 7 mag. You'll want to run it at a little bit lower voltage. You don't want it as high pitch. So I already have it set up right now where I did with the outliner. I'm going to let you listen to the, the change difference and I'll tell you what my particular power supply, how I have to set it. When I have it at full stroke, it is doing almost a 10. I'm going to back it down here a little bit. I'm about at an 8, so I took it down about two decimals. You're still getting evenly flow with the tattoo machine. It's not bogging down by any means, but it's flowing at a little bit slower rate. Again, I have it set to where it's coming out about a nickel's length. But again, with shading, you're not going to go all the way in the skin. There's going to be three levels I'm going to do with this tattoo. I'm going to start off with all black, then I'm going to go into uh, three drops into my sterilized cup of water. And I'm using large cups. You can buy them in two different packages, large and small. With a large cup, I'll start off with an all black, then I'll go to uh, three drops into my sterile water, then I'll go to one drop. That'll be your gradual fade. I've already cleaned the skin off. I've already got a start point. I'm going to do just like I started with, with the outline. I'm going to start down here at the bottom. Come in. You really need to take your time with the one shading. Slow strokes. And you always want to make sure that you stay within the lines, just like a coloring book. A lot of tattoos, that's pretty much what you're doing. Just not that easy. So I'm just going to work in. And what I'm going to try, whenever you shade, you need that you need to have a, a light source in mind. What my light sor source idea is this: is the sun is back here. So if the sun's back here, it's going to be sh f fading out this way. Or your shadow is going to be at this point. So that's how I'm going to picture. And that's typically what you're going to do with any tribal piece. You're going to want to block it in the points. Just slow, even strokes. Here's the secret with tattoos. You might get frustrated. It might take a long time. But that's why... You have to charge them when you charge because time is money 
You don't want to get in a hurry. You don't want to undercut yourself. But then again, especially starting off as a scratcher, you don't want to overprice yourself because they can go to probably somebody that's been doing this for a lot longer for the same price. And always remember, never do something that you're not capable of because you do one bad tattoo, they'll tell 100 people. You do one good tattoo and you're lucky if they tell 10. That's just business. Even strokes. And as I said, with a tattoo like this, this is not a this is not a scratcher tattoo. If you're not familiar with the term when I say scratcher, scratcher is a tattoo artist's name for basically a new tattoo two artist. This is something I would do after I've got some experience under my belt. Because even though it's a forgiving tattoo, you can come in here later on and fix things. It's just too, these lines are way too long for somebody that doesn't have a lot of experience. Um, from my peer, uh, previous uh, tattoo series, Volume 1, Volume 2 that I've had, I get a lot of feedback and I ask for a lot of feedback as far as if there's anything I can improve on or if there's any questions that somebody might have. And one of the big questions that I get is when you're doing a tattoo, especially when you're doing shading, when you put the needle in, as soon as you stick it in, you get sort of a pond effect. There's nothing really that I could tell you that I've ever learned that could change that. You just, that is part of the art. You just got to remember where the line is. If you can be observant where you started, you shouldn't go out of it. If you start to question and think you might go out of it, wipe it off and start again. As I said before with the black, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna hit points. And really this is where the art comes in because I'm sure not every tattoo artist is gonna shade the same. And I don't think there is a right or wrong way. Well, I'll, let me take that back. There is a wrong way of doing it. But I don't think there's a perfect way of doing it. It's just all how you envision where the shadow needs to be on a tattoo. A lot of tattoo artists use a lot bigger needles than sevens, seven mags. That's preference, but I'll give you a warning. The bigger the needle you have, obviously, the more needles in it. The more needles in it the more it's puncturing the skin. Now, typically you would think that you could cover more of an area and finish a tattoo quicker. Actually, it does just the opposite. Actually, it's going to tear the skin up. It's going to not give the perfect effect that you want. With seven, I probably wouldn't go much lower than that. But that's just enough to come in here that you can get in the small areas like this. You can tilt your tattoo machine, come in and just flow out. Or you can take it to the side and do circles. It's like a paintbrush. And pretty much how I do this is every time that I feel like I need to refill my ink, I put another little bit of Vaseline on my finger 
and rub the area that I'm getting ready to start. When I say that, that's with shading. Outlining, I don't want to do that as much. You don't want a real greasy area because then you have, you risk the fact of doing a straight line and slipping. And always remember when you're doing a tattoo that you are not the one going through pain at that point. So you always want to check the status of your customer. Although I'm sure some people prefer me passed out while getting a tattoo. It's probably not the best best for any for anybody here while I'm doing this I'd like to hit a few things that I might have missed in the past Green soap can be purchased anywhere. I've never really found a place that's better than one than the other. I guess it's just wherever you can get it for the lowest price. But never dilute your green soap with any alcohol. The only time you should use alcohol at all on a tattoo is to clean your equipment and to clean off the area before you start tattooing. Because if you want to make your customer angry real quick, spray him down with some rubbing alcohol while he's got a lot of punctures in his body. If he's not in pain, he will definitely be at that point. I'm just gonna work my way around the whole tattoo, just not getting in a hurry. You're going to see on a lot of tattoo shows like Miami Ink and Ink and whatever else ink that they have that they uh, seem like they get the tattoo really quick and they're hitting areas really quick. Well, a lot of that's just illusion of television. Trust me, those tattoos that they're doing, most of them are several day tattoos. Just cut down to fit down in one episode. So don't, don't think that that's something that you'll learn in time either. I mean... Although you might learn some shortcuts and some different techniques, speed usually doesn't mean for good work. Well, I'm gonna pretty much go through here and I'm gonna finish out clean, hitting all the tips. There's no certain way again that, like I said, I'm gonna do it. If I see any lines, like in here, there's a, this line right here, it's probably gonna be hard for you to see, but it's a little bit crooked. I'll take my seven, mag and I'll just run it across and straighten it out that's how you're going to straighten out all your lines like I said that's why you don't want to spend a lot of time I want to keep going over with your outliner because the only thing you're going to do is tear up the skin if it ever gets to the point it seems like as quick as you're putting ink in it's pushing it back out it's time to stop I mean your customer has to understand the only thing you're going to start doing from that point is scar tissue your body is naturally pushing it back out for a reason so it's going to have to take another session to get it done so we'll go ahead and uh, I'll finish up what I'm doing right now and we'll come back and I'll show you the little bit lighter, greater shape. All right, I just completed what I'm gonna do with all black. Uh, if you can see in here, I just hit the corners. Right now, it might look kinda cheesy, but you gotta understand that it's a tattoo is a work in progress. Now I'm gonna go to the mid color sort of a lighter gray. You, you can alleviate doing the step process like I did if you know exactly how to blend out, which that's typically how I tattoo, but however, it's, that's, a lot, that's something you learn with time. And I, I just would like to show you the, the, the easier route of doing this. So again, what I did is I, I have my three cups total, one cup of all black, Talon's drawing ink, Second, and the other two cups right now just have sterilized water in it, diluted. So I'm going to take my first cup and take three drops into it and create a mixture. If you find that that's not dark enough, you can come back later on and um, 
fix it, but I would recommend right now just starting off. It's better to do too light than too dark. You want to make sure you really get it mixed up. That's kind of what I'm doing right now with my ink cup. And now I'm going to come in here and test it. I'm going to test and see how dark it is. So I'm going to pick a spot. And with this one, I don't want to do a lot of circle motion. I'm going to circle it and pan out. Go back into the black a little bit to even it. Pan out. And that looks like that's about the shade that I want it. Again, it might be kind of hard to see, but again, pan out. And always remember when you're shading, it might look too dark, but later on it's going to fade itself out to a gray look. That's exactly what you want. So now I'm just going to go where I had the black and fade out. Now how I'm going to do this corner right here is I'm going to take it again wide like a paintbrush and brush it out that way. And I really want to hit a lot part of the tattoo on this. Because if you do it right, it'll look like it's really fading out into the skin. It looks like it's a little bit more lighter. So I'm going to try to give it a little bit more of a darker mixture. And just really just go over again the tattoo. Paint it in. Take your time. I'm going a little fast now, but I mean, as it's starting off, just take your time with it. I mean, you really want to kind of do it just like in a real slow until you get the hang of even it out. And whenever you uh, shade like this, you're really going to want to keep going back and hitting your ink cup and refilling your needle because it'll fade out real quick because there's not a lot, of, a, lot, a lot going in there. And this is going to give a, a misconception to your customer that they're bleeding real bad. And they're actually, the reason why it looks like that is because whenever you're doing normal color is going to cover up the blood well with this seeing how it's it's a lightly diluted you're going to bring out more blood than you are uh, inking the skin a big thing you want to do is you want to really even it out you don't want it to be real dark to light I mean you, you want to just blend it in and how you blend it is again take your time with it especially right where you stop the black out you take your time in that area, then you fan it. I'm going to go along the edges here because I don't want. Got some thin lines in here that I don't like. So I'll put some shading in there. Now you'll see right here we have an open area. So how I'm going to alleviate the open area is I'm going to come in with the, the faded. Dip a little bit in the, your pure black cup, and I'm gonna do a circle. See how see how this is doing a circle, kind of a curve in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my hand in the motion that like if I was out, outlining it, and do a circle, like I'm coming out into the tattoo. And come in with the brush, do the same thing. And that'll fill in them areas in there. And this is the time that you really gonna want to spend a lot of time on. You really want to make it even. Again, time consuming, but how you make up for that is you gotta charge money for it. And this is probably the time that your customers gonna be starting to get really sore also. You've been hitting the same spots redundantly over and over. 
especially on the back part of this arm here. I don't know if you can see it like I can, but you kind of got to see what the pond effect. Just want to wipe it off. Slowly come in and blend it out. Looks like it's getting a little dark, so I'm going to dip it over into the other solution to kind of clean things out. Start again. corners and we'll start off a little bit where the points meet and then fan it. And pretty much I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the whole tattoo and do the exact same process. Just slow work your way to light. We'll go around the whole tattoo, do the whole same thing, and pretty much from that point, we're pretty much finished. Um, once I pick up after I finish it off, I'll show you some other things that you can do to kind of highlight the tattoo out, but uh, let me go ahead and finish this for my customer, and then we'll go ahead and uh, show the end result. Alright, at this point, Pretty much what we did is we finished what shading we're going to do for now. So you have two different options you can do from here. You can take your outliner, which I definitely recommend, take your outliner and go through here and touch up every line. Just kind of retrace, mainly not right here where it's black, but you want to retrace where uh, where it's exposed. You want to come out, uh, maybe tip it off a little bit better. Um, but this is definitely a two session tattoo, but I, I want to touch basis real, real quick and show you what you can do with your nine round to kind of highlight it out and kind of even even out some of your shading marks so I got my nine round shader I'll go ahead and stick it into my again to my all black Towns Inc uh, with your nine round you're going to want to leave your machine running like uh, like you will with your mag at a slow pace and you're going to want to come into each corner and just kind of fix where your mag may leave little jaggedy edges and not and not get every every crevice. Your nine rounds a good shader for on bigger areas um, you can go up with a round shader I mean I, I would you you can use bigger ones with them and it's more forgiving as opposed to um, with your mags because your mag is such a wide paintbrush like needle that it, it really makes it faulty so you just kind of go over each line you're thickening it up a little bit, you're touching up areas that kind of imperfected. And you don't have to spend a lot of time in one area with the nine round. It covers a pretty good pretty good area especially like right up in here in the corners utilize it
these real long areas that you have exposed any circle you're going to want to go in here and fatten up the line to make it look like it's three dimensional circle or curve I should say but anyways this is pretty much just a, a good needle when you're doing this style, sh style shading to come back and fix any imperfections that, that may be in the tattoo fatten up areas make them more three dimensional and pretty much again you're just going to want to go throughout the whole tattoo and hit any spot that that needs to be covered up uh, I'm gonna go ahead and finish just hitting some quick spots on this one then I'll show you the end result All right, and pretty much for this session, we're done. Um, as you can see, it's, uh, you know, we got the corners blended in, which right now, as I said earlier, it's really dark, but it's going to, you know, fade into to a real uh, gray, fine gray to make it that blended effect. Um, I attempted to go through all the corners like here and blacken it up. There's still more that could be done to this, but you don't you don't want to do. We've been working on this tattoo for about two and a half hours now, and you don't want to do too much at one time. I mean, it's your body can only take so much tolerance, and plus, like I said, it gets bad for the skin just because the simple fact that it's going to start pushing it out or it's just going to start scabbing up, and your body will naturally start uh, pushing the ink back out. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and put an occlusive dressing. Um, I've seen a lot of tattoo artists will put Saran Wrap. I personally don't recommend it. I think it's better for your tattoo to get some kind of air and breathe. I'm not saying that if you do do it, it's, it's going to ruin the tattoo, but I would just put an occlusive dressing over top of it after your client obviously has had an opportunity to see it. Um, and wait, typically healing process depends on the person. It can take anywhere from two weeks to up to a month. It just depends on how much work is done and how fast they heal. But they'll know when they're completely healed over because there won't be a scab left. And you really can't do any touch up until all them scabs are gone. That's just going to be too much. Um, it, it's just pretty much like going over fresh ink and it, it'll ruin your tattoo. So pretty much I'm done with this and uh, we'll continue with uh, a little bit more.